Today I'm going to be watching Heritage Minute videos. These are short one minute videos from Historica Canada that detail important moments and important people in Canada's rich history. And I've made a couple of these videos before. I've watched quite a lot of Heritage Minute videos so far and I really do feel enriched having watched them. I feel like I've learned so much about Canada's history and for that I feel privileged. And it's such a vast array of topics as well. If Everything from things like the military and sport uh, to like things like Canada's indigenous population's history and just Canada's history in general. The last video we've seen things like the flag, the national anthem, these different things to do with Canada that I had no idea about before but I just feel so happy to know now and I absolutely love Canada's history. It's so, so so much to learn, so much more to learn, and I can't wait to do that. Uh, with regards to Heritage Minute videos, tell me what your favourite video you've ever seen, uh, your favourite Heritage Minute video is, and tell me if there's any Heritage Minute video that you remember that I've not reacted to, and I'll make that, a, I'll do that in a, an upcoming video. Uh, first today we've got, we've got 12 videos to react to today. First we've got one called Nursing Sisters. Let's check it out. Dear Mother, I am no stranger to suffering, but nothing could have prepared me for this. The boys come to us mangled and blinded, and so often there is little we can do. If this war doesn't end soon, there won't be a man living on the face of the earth. Air raid. But don't worry, we nurses continue. I continue. I'm glad I came, but I think very often how good it will be when it's all over and I'm returning to all I love most, home. Eleanor Thompson was awarded the Military Medal for her bravery that night. Eden Pringle was killed in action. They were two of the nearly 3,000 Canadian nursing sisters during the First World War. Wow. So, I've reacted to quite a few Canadian military videos before and absolutely love that part of Canadian history but this is one area that I've not really seen any focus on and that's the females that have taken part uh, in these wars that were part of the military. In this case it was the nursing sisters. Uh, I mean we're talking here that was 1918 so at the end of the First World War around about the time of the like, suffragette movement when women were just trying to fight for the right to vote and at that time even though they never had that what you would maybe say is a human right they were still here in in a war zone saving their fellow country people's lives seeing some terrible terrible sights i would imagine uh, such strong strong women three thousand nursing sisters Again, it's something I've never really considered when you think about military. The, there's so many different military professionals doing so many different types of roles and they all deserve respect. And I love to see that the, the nursing sisters of Canada uh, got, that, got that respect. Uh, excellent. Next we've got Sitting Bull, 1877. You've got more men back there than I have in the whole of Western Canada. Yeah, but Sitting Bull held a war dance last night. General Terry, in Canada, Sitting Bull has kept the Queen's peace. He's agreed to meet with you. And spotted evil. That face doesn't look ready to come back to the States without a fight. I President Hayes says you will be received kindly and... The Grandmother's Medicine House is no place for lies. Not two more words. This country does not belong to you. We will stay here and keep the Grandmother's peace. She will let us raise our children. We do not want lies. These men, Walsh, McLeod, they're the first white men who never lied to us. I didn't know then that they'd be starved out of Canada and go back to the States. Walsh would resign over it. And Sitting Bull would be murdered. Hmm. What did they mean by starved out of Canada? But it, yeah, this obviously is a, another interesting part of Canada's history because it's just so like completely different uh, from the world we live in today with these uh, Native Americans, these indigenous people. Uh, this was only like, what, 50 years before that last video as well and a completely different complexion to the world even in that small space of time. But what I'm taking from this video is Sitting Bull was 
like a Native American from the USA. Uh, looks like he was in Canada for some reason, but preferred to stay there if he trusted the, the Canadian people more than the people of the United States of America. But again, something like seeing these sort of Native Americans and the indigenous people, something that's very unique to North America and so far away from our lives today, but it's really fascinating to learn about. Uh, tell me more about Sitting Bull and his story. And next we've got Marconi. <laughs> 1901. Hey, come on! The antenna is holding, sir. Yes. Bravo. Yes, indeed. This is going to make your world a lot different than the one I grew up in. You know where England is? Sure, it's over there. And over there is where that sound is coming from. Right, Mr. Marconi? Through the air, across the ocean, the first time ever. So I guess this one was the first sort of, is that like radio, some sort of signal uh, that they're sending across maybe to England there, they're talking about England there, so the first like sort of transatlantic signal of some sort, and this was the turn of the century, I think that was 1901 as well, and again, you see these methods that they're actually using to send signals so primitive in, in what, compared to what we have today, uh, we take instant communication and instant like connection with people in the, every part of the world. So uh, we take it for granted. It's just so easy to connect with anybody anywhere now. You see these people out in some hillside, some cliffside, using what looks like some sort of kite, using all these primitive methods to send a signal in such a momentous occasion. Something so small, these men in this room on a cliff, this small thing is such a momentous part of not just Canada's history, but the history of the world, man. Uh, things like this change the course of the world. And you see, like, the First World War came after this, probably using this sort of technology for different reasons. Uh, watching these videos so far, three quite things that happened quite long ago, but, like, connected in slightly different ways. It's in, But you still see how quickly things changed in these small periods of time as well. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so let's see, next we've got Vancouver, Asahi. We were born in Canada. We spoke English. On the streets, we weren't welcome. But on the field, we were the Asahi. Vancouver's champions. Everyone cheer for us. Our people have a voice. Then Canada declared a war on Japan. They took us from our homes, called us enemies, forced us into camps. Really? But we brought the game with us. Baseball helped get us through the internment. The Vancouver Asahi were among the 22,000 Japanese Canadians interned during the Second World War. The team never played another game. Wow. That's just a heartbreaking story throughout that. I mean, you see that man there? He was third base. That was a, a player from that time, I'm sure. He must have a absolutely riveting life story. I would love to hear more from him and more about this. As I said before, being a sports fan, I always have a, a kind of extra interesting stories about sport but something like this uh, you see these Japanese people who have moved to Canada to have a start a new life and hopefully have a prosperous life and you see at the start there they talked about it was already difficult there they were treated differently but baseball was their sort of 
their way of getting over that. They had this team here, it looked like made up of Japanese immigrants, and you know, of course, I'm sure they couldn't envisage North American countries, America, Canada, going to war with Japan before they actually moved. But that's just something that happened, and yeah how they were treated, yeah, that's quite harsh, but I guess in moments of war, especially during the Second World War, people were so paranoid and didn't want to have any sort of, maybe didn't have want to have any domestic incidents with people from these countries, you know, these people might see their country being at war and might feel like they need to do something in Canada, so I can see the sort of reasoning why Canada would move these people to sort of camps and stuff but it's still a very very sad situation and you see they still lived they still played their baseball there and still uh, try to use that to get over the the pain in their life at these times man so heartbreaking story one that's very interesting again the same as the others okay next we've got Morris Rocket Richard Yeah, but you told me that. Okay. I wanted the day off. I knew they wouldn't leave me alone. But I couldn't let the guys down. That night in 1944, Montreal beat Detroit 9 to 1. Maurice Rocket Richard scored eight points, five goals, three assists. A legend was born. Whoa, what a performance. Again, I've been making reactions to hockey on my other channel. That's why I started this channel. And I'm absolutely fallen, fallen in love with the sport of hockey. It's so interesting, so exciting. And you see some parts over there, obviously this is a dramatised version, so it's not the actual real action, but you see things like he's almost getting into a fight, scoring some great goals and stuff. Tell me more about him, what's his story? He obviously had a great performance in this match here. And yeah, I want to know more about him, but tell me more about the other legends of Canadian hockey, Canadian sport in general, that would be great to learn more about that. Tell me who the, the big stars, I know obviously Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, that's someone who transcended hockey and just became known everywhere. Uh, but tell me more about the great Canadian sports stars, maybe I'll make a video on that as well. Uh, next we've got Jackie Shane. Long way from Nashville to Mama, I tell you that. Performed from Montreal to Boston to Los Angeles. But Toronto, that's my chosen home. Sure, when I'm walking down Young Street, I see some funny people. I have the nerve to point the finger at me and grin and smile and whisper. My song was number two on local radio. Sold 10,000 in Toronto alone. Turned down Ed Sullivan because they asked me to remove my makeup. Wouldn't do American Bandstand because of their segregation policies. I was just being me. Never tried to explain myself to anyone. And besides, none of that don't worry, Jackie, because I know I look good. Got a new way of loving, baby. Thought I want to teach it to you. Jackie Shane was a pioneer transgender soul singer, a central figure in the Toronto R&B scene. She helped shape what we know as the Toronto sound. Wow, man, a transgender uh, black R&B singer at that time must have been so trailblazing. I, I, we take it for granted how like liberal western countries are today and how things like this although there is some you know like social media is having some uh like things with t to do with transgender people today it's still still an issue for some people but back at this time it would have just been something so completely out of the norm that it would take like unbelievable personality to get over probably what that person went through man all the negativity and possibly even things like hatred as well. Uh, the strength of personality and character to get through that and be a famous, uh, respected performer. 
that's just it's quite unbelievable really tell me what you you know about Jackie Shane and uh, how they're remembered in in Canada's history and uh, next we've got Grey Owl the world's most famous Canadian Grey Owl just back it's from a triumphant Canadian. British tour is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of First Nations. Archie, you may not realize this, but right now you are the most famous Red Indian in the world. These are your people. You have to be there. Come on, Harry. Is that Pierce Brosnan? Sure, I'm sure. His name is Archie Bellini. And if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer, <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. My brother says, men become what they dream. You have dreamed well. Huh. Well, that is an interesting one. That one I really have no idea about. So Grey Owl, it looks like they said he's an Englishman. I don't know if he was pretending to be a Native American or an, like a, an indigenous person, First Nations person, people, sorry. And But it looks like he actually, by doing that, brought a lot of light or shone a light on the Native, Native American indigenous people. And ended up like bringing their story to the forefront of people's uh, knowledge, which is a very interesting story. Like, I wonder how that would be seen today. You know, things like this, when people uh, do things, I guess it would be like termed as cultural appropriation, especially in Western countries, again, anyway. And they usually get a lot of disrespect. But this one, it looked like the indigenous people actually respected him for being able to generate some media interest in their play and in their in their way of life. So, an interesting story. I'd love to know people's opinions on that, whether they think it was right or wrong for him to pretend to be a Native American, if that's what he was doing. Tell me more about how this story actually... Uh, how it ended, what was his life like. It'll be very interesting to know. And uh, Next, we've got John Cabot. Progress of our ship. Your fleets will have no further need of Iceland. Fish is enough to feed this kingdom. Mm. Oh, sire, until the end of time. Okay, cool. So that one you can see here is 1449 to 1499. So obviously, this is he's some sort of explorer. I mean, we hear about things, the guys like Christopher Columbus reaching what is now the United States of America and discovering it, discovering it. But obviously, even before this time, Vikings uh, reached what is now Canada and the USA, uh, but couldn't set up uh, life there or had no intention to. Whereas we see guys like this, John Cabot, who I knew nothing about before, he's obviously reached. Canadian land there and found these fish and been, made it, been able to make the judgment that that can sustain life there. So another hugely momentous thing, just exploring these. It's, again, it's hard to put ourselves in the, the life of these people, the explorers of the world, finding these lands, but finding just something so simple, finding big fish and thinking we can actually conquer this land, we can take this land and set up a the kingdom, as they mentioned there. Uh, very, very interesting again. And uh, next we've got Governor Frontenac. Move along, all Quebec, of you. 1690. Make way for the October 
an envoy comes ashore with an ultimatum of surrender for Governor Frontenac. It's been a long time since I've seen the enemy in his clothes. Tell me, Caporal. Lieutenant. Ah oui, Lieutenant. About your Colonel Schnipps. General Phipps. Ah, Phipps, oui. Is he still such an idiot? <laughs> oh, God, monsieur! Does he really think he can conquer Quebec with only two or three ships? Monsieur! We have 34 ships and a full regiment from Boston. Frontenac has one hour to surrender. You terrify me, Caporal. Wait! Enough! Arrête! Well, Governor Frontenac, your reply, sir. I will reply from the mouth of my cannon. The Americans pressed the attack, but Frontenac beat them off. Phipps weighed anchor and never returned. And yeah, so this is another interesting part of Canadian history that I've been learning about, and that is something that makes Canada very unique, and it's having that sort of French region with Quebec as opposed to the other part, which would have been uh, British, uh, managed by the British back in the day. Uh, but we can see at this time, this is 1690, that there was obviously a lot of tension between those two sides and there would have been wars going on and stuff like that. And again, it's another thing that's hard to think about when you see how united Canada is. Although people were telling me that uh, Quebec, I uh, learned about that Quebec were trying to get their independence uh, within the last uh, decade or so. And you can see that it's obviously not going to lead to things like war and stuff, but at this time, that's how they would have dealt with that, trying to take, o each, take over each other's land, or the British trying to invade and the French fighting them off. Uh, tell me what you think about this part of Canadian history. Uh, next we've got Jim Egan, Toronto 48. I never thought I'd know that feeling. To be in love. Because for us, it was a crime. Someone had to respond to the tabloids. So I wrote letters, challenging every misconception of homosexuality. Nine homes, seven dogs, 47 years together, and still not spouses under the law. So we took our fight to the Supreme Court. Jim Egan and Jack Nesbitt await a verdict on their fight for spousal rights. Hello. We lost our case, but we made a difference. As a result of Jim Egan's case, the Supreme Court ruled that sexual orientation is protected under the Charter of Rights, a landmark victory for the LGBTQ2 community. Wow, that's an interesting story as well, something I knew nothing about because before I started this channel, I knew nothing of Canadian history, unfortunately. I just know I just knew about how Canada is now as a country, very liberal, very welcoming to every race, every type of person. And it seems that anybody who lives there, no matter what kind of, if you want to say group you belong to, everybody's has a comfortable life. But it's been made possible by people like Jim Egan, uh, taking his putting fighting his full life for his uh, just for being homosexual to try and make that acceptable and yeah it's people like this we can look at like war heroes and things like that as well but there's heroes like this who uh, fought, fought in a different way but fought for something very important to him and yeah it just makes Canada the great country it is today uh, so yeah, tell me how he's remembered. Tell me how he's remembered in like the LGBT community as well. Is he like some sort of hero in that that community? Next, we've got Jenny Trout. Send them home. Get rid of them, gentlemen. Gentlemen, please. 1871. And so, this organ, which I regret I cannot name, because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex, who although. They are married, could not possibly endure. <laughs> Get them out. This is Ginny. Patience. Get them out! Dr. McFarlane! Mrs. Trout. There's no place for women in a medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Get them out! If you do not bring this classroom under control, I am going to repeat every word of this 
disgusting lecture to your charming wife. My friend Jenny Trout was not the only woman to face this kind of thing in medical school. But she would become the first woman licensed to practice medicine in Canada. Wow. Another trailblazer, the first person to, the first female to practice uh, medicine in North America. That's absolutely, when I mean, you see how they're treated there, it's so hard to believe again. I talked about at the start, remembering those nurses uh, being part of the war and how that took place around about the suffragette movement, people, females just trying to gain the right to vote. Here, they're just trying to gain the right to an education, but not only that, not only, I mean, they were allowed to do it, but not only were they not allowed to do it, but being abused to their face, being embarrassed, being uh, denigrated, humiliated, everything they've went through, again, like, there's so many, it's like, a lot of the, these videos so far, it's been like different minority groups and shown their fight that they've had to go through, so it's like, amazing that this, uh, Historica Canada have actually been able to produce these videos and show what these people have had to go through. Like, no matter even if you have a, an interest in, in Canadian history specifically, these are just videos sh people should watch just to show that how we should not treat people. This is how we should learn from the past and make sure things like this never happen to anybody else again. Like just being abused for, in this case, their sex, but different reasons. So. Yeah, heartbreaking, but you see how the strength of this woman, Jenny Trout, man, just, she was really determined to do what she wanted and, yeah, believe in herself. Uh, next we've got, uh, this one is a new one, I believe, was just released this week. It's called Paldi, uh, released three days ago. So let's watch this one. arrived in Canada, there were not many women who looked like me. Not everyone was welcoming. But my husband made a new life here in this distant country. And I thought here, here I could belong. And many others could too. As the years went on, our town flourished. Our community worked together and took care of each other. Our children grew up with a true sense of belonging. Here in Baldi, we built our home and we wanted others to do the same. Established by South Asian immigrants in 1917, the mill town of Baldi, British Columbia was one of Canada's first inclusive multicultural communities. Hmm, that, that is, I've never heard of the place Baldi before. I'd love to know what the current status of that, that place is now. Is it still like similar? Is it still a place where uh, immigrants to Canada moved to to set up life? But such a happy way to end. Uh, you see that they actually had a prosperous life. They all worked together to make themselves settle there and very comfortable. Again, it's, another, it's great for me to learn another uh, immigrant story of Canada. Canada being this country that is so well known for accepting immigrants and giving them a great life. So it's great to see a happy story, especially after that Vancouver Asahi story earlier when we learned about uh, the, the trouble and th the, the hardship they had to go through. Uh, this is a very uplifting story. Uh, I'd love to know more about Paldi today, as I mentioned there. Uh, tell me what you think about this story. Tell me what you think about all of them. That's the last one for today, but a lot of great stories. Those ones, there was a lot of older stories, so we're really learning about the foundations of Canada in a lot of these. We're learning about the the hardships and difficulties a lot of minority groups had to go through. Uh, and these are people who, for them going through it, makes Canada what it is today, such a... Uh, such a great place. So tell me what you think about all of these. What was your favorite one from there? Have you seen all of these? Is there any that you've not seen before? Did you see that new one before? Uh, tell me more about the content of each and maybe I'll make a reaction to what a couple of these videos individually to learn more about them. Thanks.